Hello, so this is A Level Physics, and today we are going to discuss year 2021 paper 1 variant 1. So, question number 1 says that what is the reasonable estimate of the volume of an adult person? For this purpose, we will use the formula density equals mass over volume, and volume becomes mass over density. The mass of an average person is 70 kg and the density of an average person is seen that of water which is 1000. So this makes up 0 0.07 meter cube which rounds up to part A 0.1 meter cube. Question number 2 says that which combination of units could be used for expressing the power dissipated in a resistor. Power is basically energy supplied per unit time and energy is work done force into distance divided by time force is measured in newtons distance in meters and time in seconds so this becomes newton meters per second so seeing the options so d newton meters per second becomes the appropriate option for question number two Let's move on to question number 3. The question number 3 says a force of 10 newtons and a force of 5 newtons act on an object. The angle between the force is 150. The resulting force on the object can be resolved into pair of perpendicular components. Which row shows the numerical expression for the possible pair of perpendicular components? Let's start by resolving this up. This is 150. So this would be 130. This would be 30 degrees. So this would make up 10 cos 30 and this would make up 10 sin 30. So solving it horizontally we get 10 cos 30 minus 5 which is over here and vertically would give us 10 sin 30 which is 10 cos 30. So we need to rethink our resolving. We need to rotate this 30 degrees clockwise. So rotating it 30 degree clockwise would give us 10 newton horizontally and 5 newton would be just like this. And this would be now be 30 degrees. This is 30. So now resolving it up would give me 5 cos 30 and this would give me 5 sin 30. So solving it horizontally would give me 10 minus 5 cos 30 and vertically would give me 5 sin 30. So these are the two values which are part C. Question 4 says a signal of frequency 25 hertz is displayed on the screen of a CRO. What is the time base setting? Now in order to find the time base setting we must find the time period which the frequency is given. So the time period could be found from time is equals to 1 over frequency which is 1 over 25 which would give us 40 into 10 vapor negative 3 so 40 milliseconds is our time period now we have the time period what we can do is count the number of blocks in which the complete period has been completed there are 1 and 2 blocks so 2 blocks multiplied by time base setting is equals to the time period which is 40 milliseconds so the time base settings is 40 divided by 2 this becomes 20 milliseconds so the required answer is b question number 5 says a micrometer screw gauge is used to measure the diameter of a wire the reading on the micrometer with the jaws closed is negative 0 0.05 plus minus 0 0.02 millimeter. The reading with the wire and position between the two jaw is positive 1.03 plus minus 0 0.02 millimeter. What is the diameter of the wire? So initially, when the jaws were closed, the reading was negative. 
so we need to add this reading in 1.02 so 1.03 would be added in 0 0.05 and when the reading is added the uncertainties are also added so plus minus 0 0.02 and plus minus 0 0.02 so adding this up would give me 1.08 plus minus 0 0.04. So this would be B. 1.08 plus minus 0 0.04 millimeter. Question number 6 says, a projectile is launched at an angle to the horizontal at time t is equal to 0. It travels over horizontal ground as shown. Air resistance is negligible, which graph shows the variation of the speed of the projectile when it is long to when it lands on the ground. So, we must realize that the horizontal component remains the same. Velocity of the horizontal component always remains the same. At highest point, it also remains the same. And at this point, it also remains the same. The horizontal velocity. Whereas, the vertical velocity is maximum initially vertical velocity is maximum initially it is zero at maximum height and it is in the maximum but opposite direction when it lands so at maximum during the mid time during the half flight the speed does exist the speed does exist it is not zero it is not zero and the, this part B cannot be the answer because uh, it's under the force of gravity. So the speed, uh, it cannot be just like this. So considering this fact that there is some velocity, C is the appropriate answer. So question number 6, the answer is C. So the next question is a train initially, a train initially at rest has a uniform acceleration of 0.2 meters per second square until it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second. It travels for a time at this constant speed and then has a uniform deceleration of 0.4 meters per second square until it comes to rest at the next station. The distance between the two stations is 3000 meters. What is the time taken by the train to travel between the two stations? Let's first sketch a velocity time graph for this situation and then solve the question. The first section says that it starts from rest, so the initial velocity is 0 and then it moves with a uniform acceleration of 0.2 meters per second square until it reaches a speed of 20. So this is the speed 20 meters per, sec uh, 20 meters per second and the acceleration, the gradient of this graph is 0.2. So we can find the change in time. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So change in time becomes change in velocity or acceleration. Change in velocity is 20. Acceleration given is 0.2. So the change in time is 100. So we can write over here that this time t is 100. Now we can find the change in time for the deceleration part. So the deceleration part, the change in time is 20 divided by 0.4, which is 50. 50 seconds. So in the next step we can equate it to the area we have the expression we can this is a trapezium so we can make an equation and set, set it up to 3000 meters which is already given in the question so we have set up an expression that 3000 equals to the area of trapezium which is half into the height as 20 and the sum of parallel sides one of the side is the longer side which is t and this side is t minus 50 minus 100 so this becomes t minus 150 now we will just solve it up and find the value of t to find the time taken by the train to travel solving it up would give us t equals to 30 seconds which becomes part c so thanks for watching this video do like and subscribe my channel for more videos thank you